Hey there guys, gals, non-binary pals. Uh, welcome to the last of the Pride videos, but I am going to be doing a lot more LGBTQ content moving forward. Probably not this week. I have a few other bits and pieces I'm hoping to do this week. But anyway, I promised you a video on Saturday. It didn't happen because I managed to put my back out on Friday. I'd had a migraine for seven days at that point. So I was already pretty miserable. And uh, <laughs> then sun I got soyed, which meant I spent Sunday in the bathroom and in bed. So needless to say, I didn't have a Pride weekend. It just didn't happen. I missed a Pride party I was really looking forward to. And yeah, it sucks. <coughs> but anyway, I digress. So I suppose as the last video for this year, I want to talk about what, pre what the Pride itself means to me now. And honestly, pride itself doesn't mean very much to me at all. What does mean a lot to me is the interlinking activism that has kind of come out of that. So gay rights now intersect with trans rights because an awful lot of trans people are gay. And abortion rights interact intersect with it because obviously lots of LGBT folk can bear children and don't necessarily want to or are not necessarily in a safe place to do so and so on and so forth uh, marriage rights awesome all these places where it intersects it means that the LGBT community are not uh, what's the word for it isolated in the way that it used to be it wasn't all that long ago that LGBT were kind of out on their own and the T's were really out on their own now it's not so much like that now admittedly we do have a particularly nasty strain of turfs coming into Ireland um, I'm hoping that the Irish feminists community will rally around the way they did the last time and stamp them into the ground because uh, if we do it it doesn't work out very well for anyone concerned apart from the turfs um, I like the fact that because of all that activism, several of my friends are married to people that they otherwise couldn't be married to. And that means that they are happy and safer and their futures are more secure, which is wonderful. And someday may even happen to me. Uh, I do like the fact that, I really like the fact that you're less likely to get badly treated in hospitals due to your sexuality or gender expression. <coughs> That's not to say it doesn't happen, because I have a hell of a story of transphobia in a hospital that only happened a few years ago. But uh, that's not for today. It, it does still happen, but not to the same degree. The same with schools and police. It does still happen, but not to the same degree, which is progress. The main thing is that it, because it's become... Cause LGBT and the pride movement and the amalgamation of these different subsects into one overarching group it, it gives us political clout that didn't exist before and because of that we don't stand alone in the same way uh, again a great example would be when there was going to be a turf tour turf by the way meaning trans exclusionary radical feminists although actually they're not in any way feminist or radical. They're just exclusionary and transphobic. Yeah. So a few years ago, there was going to be a, tra a, a turf tour by a speaker and the Irish Feminist Society stamped on it so freaking hard. The community in Ireland, the, the feminist communities in Ireland, by and large, are so so accepting and inc inclusive of trans folk which means that we have support from both sides now admittedly on both sides we also have people who are dead set against our existence but they're massively outnumbered and by and large you can count on a certain amount of support like um, by and large when I've had trouble in public it has been men directing trouble to me and the women around that are around will stamp on it really hard. That said, even when it's women causing trouble, they stamp, the other women tra stamp on it fairly hard. Um, it was one day and I was on the bus, I was on the train 
going out to Kilcock and I was crying because I'd had a really, really bad day. I'd had got some bad news and things were really fucking awful. And when I cry, I do not sound in any way feminine. So this woman started giving me fucking grief. Like the nicest thing she called me was a freak. You don't want to know how bad it got. And there were only three other people in the carriage and all three of them were women and they all intervened. They weren't together. They were all separate and they all intervened. They all ended up getting a four seater table and put me on the inside at the other end of the carriage. They all told her to shut the fuck up and mind her own fucking business. You know, th there is that sense of backup that it's, it'll be okay. It's actually one of the things I love about living in this estate is the women who live here have just basically accepted me as one of their own, which is really nice. It's really pleasant and really enjoyable and really reassuring. And the funny thing is most of the men have accepted me as one of their own too, which is really funny. Uh, my neighbor next door is a finishing foreman and like all I have to say is I need a hand with something because I physically can't move it or I can't hold it up. And, and he's straight over to help me. Guy on the other side, really lovely, helps with the lawn because I am terrible at that. I, the support is there and they know I'm trans and they know I'm super gay and they don't care. It's, you know, they are who they are. Leave them alone. Uh, that really is what Pride is about. It's not so much the coming together of the community, to me, I should say. It's more forging connections and mutual support networks with people who aren't under the LGBTQIA plus umbrella. Because, yeah, we back each other up to a large degree. But there are things that cis, heteronormative people can do that we can't get away with. And when they, they have become so enamored with us in a lot of ways that it's like, no, no, you don't fuck with them. You know, we're on their side. You lose, sir. You lose. You lose everything. And it's that's what it means to me. It's not... I don't think of Pride really as a, a forging of links within the community because those links pretty much already exist, though they can always be strengthened. It's forging links with people you would never expect outside of the community who are just... just-minded. They believe in things being just and right and they believe in, for lack of a better word, righteousness. That means a lot. That means an awful lot. Think about all the straight people who voted so we could marry. And it was one of the most lopsided referenda in Irish history. You know, Roscommon was the only place they voted against. I cannot think of a single referendum that was ever that clear cut before. It was absolutely incredible. And I utterly ignored everything to do with it coming up to it because it was so personal that I, I just psychologically couldn't do it. I just couldn't. And then I saw the results and it was, oh, the shit. Everything's changed. And that was the day everything changed in Ireland for LGBT folk. That said, we still have assholes, but, you know, step 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 and we get to the end in time so yeah that's the end of the pride videos for this year next year i have uh plans for pride videos starting at the start of the month and running through the whole month and they will be a bit more scripted and be a bit better worked out this literally was being done day by day as i was able so i wasn't able to do as much but my intentions for next year is to record well ahead and have everything edited and together and I'm working on my editing skills so I can do better videos anyway uh I will be back with another vlog pretty soon it's definitely this week I'm not sure which day so stay tuned uh I hope you all had a great pride those of you who aren't LGBT I hope that even though pride is over you don't ease off on the support because it's always needed have a great day be good and bye for now.